you have an amazing brand and company. Can you tell us the why behind Fuoco? And Fuoco is Italian for fire? Italian for fire. Yes, I am uh, Italian on my mom's side. So I have a very strong affinity for all things Italian. And so when I was uh, looking for a name for my company several years ago, it just sort of... Um, it evolved. It wasn't something that I, you know, had in mind. And then I'm like, oh, that's perfect. And uh, I can be chief fire starter, which seems kind of fun. So that's it. That's awesome. And then, and so you, you have a digital marketing agency. You all do a lot of B2B. And I think your services lean in the direction of really heavy duty strategy and um, the, the big, the, the hard questions. Not That's the right. easy questions, but the hard questions. Is that right? Why, what That's took right. you in that direction? Why did Fuoco become? What, why did it emerge? Fuoco emerged um, not because it was something that I ever really set out to do, you know, have my own agency. I just, um, my career went from journalism to politics to um, in-house for a healthcare company called Healthways a million years ago. It doesn't even exist anymore. But um I got really deep into healthcare B2B during that time. And then I went to work for a couple different agencies. And then my last agency that I worked for was acquired. And so when I left there, I had a non-compete for a little bit. And so I thought, well, maybe I should just set out on my own, uh, you know, and see how that goes. And so that's what I did. And I just was an independent consultant for really the first year and, you know, just through growth, um, it evolved from me working th with other freelance uh, consultants to starting an actual agency. And that's where it has gone. And healthcare is really, you know, what I've been involved in for so long, over 20 years. And it just made sense for me to continue down that path and, and specifically healthcare B2B. So, you know, Fuoco really grew out of that and we do a combination of, we, we're an integrated marketing agency. So we do digital marketing, we do um, brand and, and messaging strategy, and we do a lot of PR media relations. We love it when a client asks us to help them with all of those things, because when you are able to take an integrated approach and really leverage all channels um, and, and and align all channels, that's when we see the most success. Mm. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it seems in the healthcare space, one of our experiences, I'm curious to know if you think this is true, the more sophisticated the industry, something like healthcare, extremely complex, uh, legislation, you know, legislation issues, you know, even internet of things, manufacturing new products that are coming to market, yeah. uh, massive complexity around funding and, you know, hospital networks, that sort of thing. But yeah. how, how did branding become sort of the, one of the core pieces is, is that more of a, would, would you say that's kind of a home base for what you're doing or is it more marketing strategy? What do you think is kind of the single point of focus in how you relate to your customers? Yeah, I think from a branding perspective, while we have helped a lot of companies and clients go from, you know, creating a brand from scratch. So everything from naming to visual identity, building a website, and then all the marketing, go to market plan and execution. We do all those things, but, um, and we partner, you know, with, we, we don't, necessarily have in-house for every single thing. Just like really there's, I've never run into any agency that has in-house talent for every single thing. But when you do this, you know, and you live and breathe this business, you know, who's good at what, and you go and you get, you know, those partners. So that's what we do. But from a branding perspective, what I would say is that inevitably nine times out of 10, what happens if someone comes to us looking for marketing or media relations or PR help, we inevitably find that we have to kind of take a step back and we have to work on messaging and positioning mm. almost every time because we're like, oh, okay, what's your messaging and positioning? Oh, well, actually we really need to work on that. We have 
really evolved our brand or evolved who we are as a company. We've acquired different, you know, other companies or capabilities, or they've built them from scratch. And so a lot of times what we find is a, you know, a client, what you can see in the web on the website or externally is not at all who they are today because, mm. you know, there can always be a lag time, you know? I mean, I look at sometimes even our own, Fuoco website. And I'm like, Oh gosh, really need to, you know, update some things, but you know, it's like kind of, you're so busy in the business and growing and developing new capabilities or merging or acquiring or whatever you're doing that a lot of times, you know, the business outpaces your, your public persona, your public brand, you know, your public facing assets. So I'm kind of uh, going on and on about that, but that is really, you know, when we think about brand, it, it almost always comes down to that. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times I feel like the pace of change and, you know, recent years in particular, you know, we're sitting here in, you know, end of Q3, 2023, you know, coming off of a few years of COVID, massive shifts in the economy. But some of what we're seeing is just every, the deck is just sort of constantly being reshuffled now. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so I think a lot of, I think a lot of our clients, a lot of your clients, probably, you know, everybody in Nashville who works in healthcare, it, there's a lot of sort of resetting and figuring out, okay, where do we go from here? 